thank uh, Dawn and Paragluck and, and folks here for um, for this award. I, you know, I wouldn't. I, if you had told me 60 years ago, maybe it wasn't quite 60, uh, that I was going to come back and get an award, a Lifetime Achievement Award, I, 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 I couldn't even imagine that I would understand that. So I wrote down a few words, and you know, some of it will be you all already heard. <clears throat> you know, when I graduated, it was uh, in 67. And growing up in a single parent household in Philadelphia, I was blessed with an unconditional love for my mother. Julia made it a point to enrich your son's lives and instilled in, in them a passion to go to college and the understanding that as black men, we have to be twice as good to be perceived as equals. So in 1963, with the country in the midst of civil rights struggle, I had a decision to make. Do I apply to one of the traditional schools available to black people, or do I apply to a school I really want, Penn State? Needless to say, I followed my heart, and I was accepted here. And when I arrived, I don't know if you can remember your first time visiting this campus, but back then, coming from the neighborhood I was coming from, Penn State was a whole nother world. It was huge, impressive, bustling with energy, and overwhelmingly white. And to make matters worse, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Now my plan was, like most freshmen, was coming from the neighborhood that I came from. I, um, I wanted to spend a couple of years taking liberal arts classes and declare a major by the end of my sophomore year. But in my first week, at the freshman orientation, I had a profound encounter that <coughs> altered my life. I met Arthur Hungerford. Arthur Hungerford was a highly regarded professor in the speech department, a former professional broadcaster and a student advisor. We instantly connected and he took an interest in me. Maybe it was because I was black, or maybe because he saw something in me. But I eventually asked him to be my advisor and he became my first mentor. He made suggestions and recommendations that led me to taking classes in journalism, broadcasting, film, theater. He opened doors for me that led to internships during the, my sophomore year at the TV station KDK in, in Pittsburgh and KYW in Philly. He made a huge impact on my life. While Arthur Hungerford was opening doors for me in the entertainment and broadcasting field, Penn State was opening up my world, my world. I embraced college life, and in doing so, became immersed in important social and political issues of the day. I pledged for Kappa Alpha Psi, which brought me in to a network of black fraternities and sororities. I was able to share laughs, thoughts, ideas, and concerns with other free-thinking, highly motivated black folks. I joined the jazz club. And that offered me the opportunity to meet and relate to artists, musicians, and progressive thinkers. I took part in booking and promoting concerts, skills that would serve me later in the entertainment business. I helped book great performers like John Coltrane, Muddy Waters, Dionne Warwick, Herbie Hancock, Thelonious Monk, and many more right here at Penn State. Wow. Needless to say, four, the four years I spent at Penn State University were eye-opening, enriching, and crucial in my development as an artist and as an adult. I left here with a bachelor's degree, but more importantly, poignant experiences, vivid memories, and long-lasting relationships. Many I still have to this day. Penn State prepared me for every step that followed. It was the launching pad that set me up to succeed. It lit a passion that has driven me through my career. So I want to thank, take this opportunity to thank Penn State for this award. Arthur, Hang Arthur Hungerford truly inspired and assisted me, but there were many others here at Happy Valley that helped me along the way, and I'm grateful to all of them. And over my years, my career, I was blessed to work with many icons, like Alvin Ailey, James Baldwin, Harry Belafonte, Red Fox, and many more. 
They're just some of the legends that opened doors for me, and more importantly, made a lifelong impact on me. So, I can say that, while I'm proud of being a director and a producer, the titles I'm most proud of are Supportive Father, Doting Grandfather, and Loving Husband. So thank you to my incredible kids, my five incredible kids, who aren't kids anymore, they're all way grown up. <laughs> my adorable grandkids, and my extraordinary, beautiful wife, and Haitian queen, Marguerite. <laughs> well, before I go, I want to say to you all, you know, just some of my, um, I want to leave you with this. Set goals, but be willing to change them. When your world changes, so must you. Seek out guidance, because no matter how much you know, there's always more to learn. Be prepared, but don't rush the preparation. And understand that while there are many opportunities out there, that many, many more than when I started, there's also much more competition these days. So be ready when your opportunity arrives. Get out there and work your asses off. Thank you.